Hey friends, welcome back. This is Ashley with Uncommon Roots Homestead. And today I'm over at the land and I am going to plant my trellises. And I thought I would bring you along. But first, I wanna go check on Fury and Jeannie because I just got here and I can't see them. And I've told you before, it drives me crazy when I can't see them down in the field. So let's take a ride over. So I just legitimately had a heart attack. So I drove down here and nothing. I saw Jeannie, Jeannie stood up in the field. So I saw her, but I didn't see the dog at all. So I started calling him and I didn't see him moving and I haven't gone in yet, but then I heard a dog barking from over towards the neighbor's property. And like my heart was just sinking. And then out of nowhere, Fairy, what were you doing? So he's obviously fine. He is in here. Um, <laughs> Great Pyrenees are known for their roaming tendencies. So I, uh, no, 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 don't climb. Don't climb down, down. We've been trying not to actually get too close to the fence because I don't want him to start trying to get out. But um, huh, it's just like one of those moments where I was like, are you kidding me that this dog has gone missing? Um, Oh, just gave me a heart attack. Jeannie's udder looks pretty full, actually. I might go in and check Jeannie. So I've started when I come in here, um, letting Fury out. He doesn't roam that far while we're here. Now I say that and today will be the day that he like heads over to the neighbor's house, but Jeannie's not a huge fan. So if I want to come in and like check Jeannie, I try to just keep him out of here. Hi Jeannie girl. How you doing sister? How's it going? How are you doing? Hi, big girl. Hi, big mama. How's it going, mama? Let's see. You looking good, huh? So I wanna take a look at her udder. So it's starting to fill out, but it's still got a ways to go. The back is filling out a little bit, but it'll fill out a lot more than that. Not yet, huh, mama? All right, so Jeannie looks good. Fury is, <laughs> he's waiting on the other side of the fence for me to let him back in. Uh, they're doing good. I don't get, I don't get to come out here for very long usually. So when I am here, I'm often spending most of my time up in the garden. So, nope, you stay here. <laughs> Anyways, when I'm here for just a really short period of time, I don't, uh, I don't always come down here. Jeannie, there are plenty of trees. I would prefer you didn't do that by the fence. She's a very itchy girl. Cows. Okay, so now we got to go back up to the garden because... I gotta grab my seeds and plant the trees. I always get so sidetracked when it comes to the garden. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna look over here. And then like three hours later, I it's dark and I realize I didn't do whatever I came here to do. But I just wanted to check. I'm seeing a lot more of my lavender germinating. My holy basil is popping up like crazy. Everything is so happy. <sighs> This is one of the best times in the garden where you just see the space come to life. It's so cool, but let's get over and figure out what we want to plant. All right, so I went ahead and grabbed everything that I want to plant on these trellises today. So I have, let's see, I have um, 10 feet of trellis space and then I have that on both sides. So really 20 feet of space that I can plant. Um, some of these things you would plant closer together. Some of them are a little farther apart, like beans can be pretty closely spaced. Um, whereas, you know, cucumbers need a little bit more space unless you're gonna have the ability to water all the time because they're just very thirsty. So I'm gonna do, um, this is 
zucchino rampicante. So it's kind of like that tromboncino squash. I'm gonna grow those. I've got some Armadian lar yard long cucumbers. I've got some dragon tongue beans. I've got some yard long beans. And then I've got some red noodle beans. And then um, a sweet friend of mine on Instagram sent me some Malabar spinach. So I'm really excited about that too. So those are the varieties that I am going to get planted right now. Uh, I'm thinking that that's pretty much gonna take up all of the space that I have available, but we'll see. If I have a little bit left, I'm going to also go ahead and throw on some personal melons and like just some tiny climbers, but I'm gonna go ahead and get these planted first. And I'm gonna mark them. <laughs> Okay, so I went ahead and got the entire trellis planted. I did all of those types of beans, and then I also did those Armenian cucumbers, and then I ended up doing um, two different personal types of melons. I did a tiger melon, which is like a small, super sweet, orange flesh, cantaloupe-esque melon, um, and, and they get they only get about this big, and then I did some kajaris as well. So I might have like slightly overplanted my trellis, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> um, like I said in the last video, I'm gonna have two more trellises, so I'll do a couple more um, things on those, and I'm thinking about doing a cucumber teepee. If you've done one before, let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm not 100% sure like the best way to go about setting that up, but that's kind of my plan. But now, since I'm here and I have some time, I'm thinking I might plant the rest of that bed. Um, so I planted everything that's gonna trellis on the side, and then I have carrots on the other side, but that leaves a pretty hi Robin you come to say hi that leaves a pretty good amount of space in the middle that I haven't planted yet so that's a great opportunity to do like beets or radishes um, anything that's like a root vegetable or a quick harvest so I am gonna go ahead and probably do some different roots now <laughs> okay so I decided to put some radishes in so one thing about radishes is that they're really early they're, um, they're they're quick they're like short season so these radishes will be ready in like 30 45 days I'm gonna plant like a whole patch of radishes that I would harvest all at the same time, um, all about three inches apart or so. Uh, radishes are pretty forgiving, uh, but I do, I just put one seed in the hole. I don't over sow or anything like that just because you guys know I'm not very good at thinning. So um, if I don't have a need to thin, all the better. So I'm just kind of gonna kind of create a grid with the way that I'm planting these seeds and then just literally just pushing them down into the soil. We've been getting a ton of rain so the soil is super moist. Um, so this should be pretty good and easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these all planted and I'll probably do some spinach or lettuce kind of similarly sewed all the way down this bed. Um, and the great thing about choosing something like radishes is that it's a short-term commitment. So if I have, you know, an extra tomato or something I need to put in the ground in the next couple of weeks, these will be ready to harvest. So it's really no big deal. All right, so that got me like 20 in that little square. I usually will try to like mark it, like where, mark where I stop. So when I'm doing this like sewing in like blocks down a bed and I'm not gonna mark it because it's just kind of like, afterthought type of sewing. Um, I try to not double sew in the same spot because I didn't mark what I was doing. So I'll like lay a piece of straw or a stick or a rock to like keep track of where I've sewed so far. So, you know. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna sew is actually some more kale. Um, but this one I'm gonna sew really densely and I'm gonna cut it as baby greens. Um, so unlike, you know, if I was gonna plant this Siberian kale, Normally I would want to give it like a foot of space, but when I'm going to do baby greens, I literally will just like toss them um, and then lightly cover them and that's all you have to do. It's good to go. Also, while I'm out here, um, I've been thinking about how I am going to trellis all of my tomatoes this year. So in the past, I've actually used wooden trellises to trellis in between. I might do that again. I might look at some kind of cattle panel or something like that. I have probably two or three more weeks before I really need to like buckle down and make a decision on how I want to trellis. Um, a couple of these are getting a little bit tall. This guy here, he's a little tall and starting to lean. I could throw a cage around him until I'm ready to like figure out what I want to do. 
Um, but I want something a little bit more permanent than that. So I'm thinking about running some kind of panel down. I made a mistake. Um, I planted this bed specifically. I planted the rows so far apart that I'll actually need to do two separate trellises. That was a mistake. Really, I should have planted them a little bit closer together. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do yet. I need to figure that out because tomatoes do need some kind of a support. Uh, I am going to be uh, pruning them down to a single stem, um, but they need support either way. So I'm gonna make sure to go ahead and do that. Ah, my asparagus is sprouting. Look at this. My asparagus is sprouting. I saw another one, where did it go? exciting. Oh, this guy is sticking right on out of the ground. We'll bury him back up. But how exciting that these are starting to sprout. Look, look at this. Nice. I'm gonna bury it back up. So with asparagus, with asparagus you want to actually like mound it up similar to potatoes actually. Um, so now that these are all sprouting, I'm actually going to bring in another load of compost and just dump it on top to give them another like four inches or so. Um, my lettuce is looking great. Oh, I know I just did a garden tour, but it's like this time of year, everything just like takes off. Look at this spinach. It looks beautiful. My lettuce is ready to be harvested. Oh, I swear this time of year, like I can't even keep on top of everything. It just is ready so quickly. Ooh, and it's chilly. I can spend so much time in this space. Love it. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about before I jump off for the day um, are these. This is elephant ear or elephant, sorry, I always call it elephant ear, but it's just elephant garlic and it has put up its scapes. So I was researching and you actually can eat these scapes. So I think what I'm gonna do is tomorrow probably, cause I wanna make sure I have a plan of what I'm gonna do, but tomorrow I'll come in and I'll harvest these and I'm gonna make something with them. Super exciting, look how giant that is. It's just ginormous. And my passion vine came back. It's looking good. He'll go ahead and climb up here. Oh, somebody. A little bug in there. All right, so that's pretty much a wrap. I got both trellises planted. Hopefully uh, everything takes off. It's kind of the perfect time to plant right now. We've had four days of really heavy rain, so the compost is really wet and just welcoming to new seeds. So I am hoping that this was the perfect time to plant the trellis. I also went ahead and finished up that bed. I planted some lettuce, some flowers, some radishes, and some beets. So, uh, and, oh, and some kale to harvest as baby kale. Um, so yeah, this place is so full of food. It's just, it's still so crazy to me that already, I mean, look at this space. I hope I never lose this, this feeling of overwhelming gratitude for the place that we're in and that this is my reality, um, that I get to experience this. And you know, two years ago when I was gardening just in my small little eight by four garden bed and, you know, dreaming of a bigger space I didn't even dream of this. I didn't dream of having 14 acres. And you know, this is just a small portion of what we're gonna be able to do here on our farm. And gosh, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it because God is so good that he doesn't limit us to what we can imagine or what we think that we want. It's so much greater than that. It's so much bigger than that. And I'm so thankful that I'm not limited to my own dreams because I think sometimes we're too scared to really let go and dream big. So if you're gardening in a little 
four by eight space and you're dreaming of maybe just two garden beds, two four by eight spaces, give yourself the freedom to dream bigger because it can and will happen. And it might look different for you than it does for me and that's okay. But give yourself the freedom to dream because it's worth it. And it makes this, it makes standing here, looking out over this and looking out over all of the space we have to expand and looking out over all of the space on this farm that we've yet to grow into. And it makes it all seem possible. I don't ever wanna take this for granted. Even this guy. Come here, Babin. <laughs> Thank you, friends. Thank you for joining me in the garden today. I know it wasn't a very long time that we've spent together, but I hope that it renews your soul like it does mine. Thanks for being here. You always have a spot in my garden. Until next time. <laughs>